Hey guys, it's Shane Simmons here and I'm at Judicola Rock here in North Carolina. The Judicola Rock Petroglyphs and I'm going to walk down here to it. Um, it's kind of an interesting way to get here. It's kind of a curvy two-lane road for a good portion of it. And um, it's fairly well marked. There's one little turnoff that I missed. If there was a sign, I missed it. But yeah, it's about here in the boonies out when you, once you get out here. Pretty cool though. I'll give you a little bit of the history of that and uh, take a look at it. It's, um, and I'll head down that way right now as a matter of fact. But... Let me read this sign to you as well. Judicola Rock. Cultural and archaeological site is one of America's most significant historical places. Revered through the ages by the Cherokee, the site's rich cultural heritage legacy makes this one of the most important ancestral places. The rock is carved with approximately 1,548 designs, more than any other known petroglyph boulder in the eastern United States. Petroglyphs are images and designs engraved within a rock surface to symbolize important places, stories, or events. Archaeological archaeologists believe intensive use of the site began over 3,000 years ago when the soapstone boulders were quarried for making bowls. Petroglyph carving began around 1,500 years ago and likely continued until European settlement disrupted Cherokee lifeways and traditions some 300 years ago. For nearly 100 years, the Parker family has been a good steward and protected the boulder on the farm from the vandalism that has defaced or destroyed many of North Carolina's petroglyph sites. In 1959, Milas Parker donated the one-acre tract around the boulder to Jackson County in 2011, grandson Jerry Parker placed 107 acres of the family farm into a permanent conservation easement that protects the boulder, or protects the broader cultural site and preserves the undeveloped mountain experience for generations to come. And I'm sorry you had to sit through all that. <laughs> I didn't think it would take that long. Let's walk down here and check, check out the Judicola Rock. Glad to hear that they've took, taken great care of that, and I've heard that several times. And there it is. You see all the little markings on it. The sign here says for generations the Cherokees lived in clusters of independent towns located along river bottoms throughout the southern Appalachians. The traditional terrain extended into eight modern states. Judicola Rock is 30 miles from the Koala boundary, home to today's eastern band of Cherokee Indians. The petroglyph is near Kalawi, once home to a historic Cherokee town and the site of a council house mound. The rock may have served as a boundary marker for Cherokee hunting grounds, which were closely guarded by the legendary giant and master of animals, Judicola. Let's see around here. Let me see that angle of it. And who is Judicola? According to Cherokee legend, Judicola was a slant-eyed giant who lived high up on, in the Balsam Mountains. He guarded his hunting grounds from Judicola's judgment seat, today known as Devil's Courthouse, a sight reached from the Blue Ridge Parkway. Once a part of disrespectful hunters came through this land, Judicola chased him down the mountain. With a mighty leap, the angry giant landed near Caney Fork on a large boulder, putting his hand down to steady himself. He left his mark on the rock's surface. The impression of his hand can still be seen at the lower right of the rock. Judicola's marks have also been seen on other boulders throughout Cherokee lands, including near the mother town of Katoa, a sacred and prominent Cherokee religious center. Use the drawing at left to locate Judicola's handprint and other glyphs. So, as you can see there, supposedly had seven fingers, and that's just an artist rendering by Nancy Lou Patterson. Here and take a look at it up close and in person. Okay. Let's 
markings on Judicola rock were made by Cherokee Indians at different points in time over 3,000 years ago. They began to quarry soapstone from the surface of Judicola rock, chipping off pieces to carve into bowls. The scars that remain from these activities can be seen at the lower left of the rock where soapstone bowl material was cut from the main rock. You can see that down here. Not until much later after quarrying at the site had ceased it, that the petroglyphs were inscribed into the rock. Archaeologists estimate that most of the, the glyphs are between 30 or 300 and 1500 years old. Let's cut another bowl that they cut them out too. a little bit closer view of it. I'm going to touch that stone. And you can see that handprint and the fingers coming down through here. Hopefully that'll show up in the video. Put it down that way. Of course, you had seven fingers and I only have the five you would come to expect. <laughs> I'm no Judicola. It's a great documentary I was recommended to watch the other day on this, and it was from History Channel. I'm trying to read it, if you would like to watch that, it's about 45 minutes long, but it's well worth the effort. Tell us a little bit more about this. And that was a look at Judicola Rock. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll try to give you more of these views in the future. Thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, and supporting us every way you do, as I continue to show you the real Appalachia. Only here. Only now. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you on down the road. I was getting ready to leave Judicola Rock, when what did I see? A little free library. And I love it. You get a free book here. I love it so much so that I'm going to drop off a signed copy of our book, Petey the Pink-Tailed Possum, A School Tale, for anyone who might be interested. And I will put it up front and center because... That's just the kind of guy I am. Oh, not really. Actually, yes, really. Anyway, hope somebody can use that and enjoy it someday. And that's a wrap.